Hello, my name is John Burns from Final Cut Pro Classes, and I would like to show you today how to cut a basic interview. Um, first, we have um, Skip here, who we're going to put into our timeline. So here, I'm just going to take the a piece of his interview here. I'm going to click here, and for this uh, lesson, I'm going to turn the skimmer off, so it's not confusing. So here's my playhead here, and I could either drag this handle in here, or I can go to the mark and say uh, start range, and that's I on the keyboard. And then I'm going to take this here, and this will be the first chunk of video here. I'll play it till he finishes talking. Out there in the factory and what you have had an opportunity to view. So I want to go out there, so I'm going to go back up to mark, set range N, which is O on the keyboard. Or, and you can also move these handles. And I'm going to put that in our timeline, hitting this button here, the append to selected clip to primary storyline button. And that goes in the timeline there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take another chunk of skip here. And for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> turn off the audio so that uh, it's not distracting from what I'm saying. So I'm going to take another point in this clip and I'm going to say mark. In, and then I'll take it to the end and I'll put that in the timeline, hitting this button. So now I have two clips of Skip's interview in this timeline. And now I want to go to Lewis, and I'm going to go ahead and take him from this point here and mark him in. And I'm going to go, instead of marking it out, I'm just going to drag the range selector here. And marking out there. Okay, now I want to put this clip in between the two clips of skip. So I'm going to go ahead and click my timeline and hit this button here. This is going to move your timeline playhead to the uh, start of every clip. So if I hit it uh, again, it moves to the beginning of the second clip. And I know I'm on the first frame of the second clip because I have this mark right here which tells me I'm on the first frame, which is important when you insert because the playhead's going to cut the clip anywhere. So if you're not on the first frame, you'll end up either leaving frames behind from the clip that you're trying to push over, or, or if you're into the clip to the left, you'll push uh, frames over in between your edits. So it's important when you're inserting between clips to have this little mark here, this little uh, left angle on the left bottom of your viewer. So now I'm going to go ahead with my playhead here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the insert button and you'll see that it pushes the clip of skip over and inserts Lewis in the middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and take one more of Lewis. So I'm just going to randomly um, make this my endpoint. Okay, and let's take it till the end, I guess. Or maybe a little forward. So I'm going to, I could either do this or, of course, put the play out here and say set the range in. So it doesn't matter where my playhead is when I hit this button, it's always going to put it at the end of the timeline. So even though the playhead is here and I hit this append to top storyline uh, button, uh, it goes to the end of the timeline. So now I have four clips in my interview sequence and the second thing I'm going to do is start tightening up the audio, which means getting all the pauses out and all the sentences I don't want, and maybe uh, something that's redundant. So the way you do that, um, first I'm going to blow up my timeline so I can see it better. So I'm going to use this little uh, slider at the bottom of the timeline. When it gets really big and, and you get up to a frame view, what you're going to see is a a little shadow on the top of the playhead, this right here. This indicates the frame size, so if I went back frame by frame, you would see that playhead uh, moving back uh, in big increments. I don't really want it quite that big, so I'm going to blow it down a little bit. It's maybe about to there. Then I'm going to slide it over to get to the beginning. So when I start tightening up audio, basically I'm going to listen to the audio Okay, and then there might be a chunk I want to get out of the audio. Maybe he stutters or he says something that I don't want to hear or he, or he says and a couple times. 
So what I'm going to do is put the playhead where I want to take out that uh, piece of, of video and audio. And I'm going to go ahead and hit I on my keyboard. And you can see the range is from that point on till the end of the clip. Um, I don't want to take out till the end of the clip, so I'm going to move my playhead to where I do want to take out. And I'm going to hit O on my keyboard. And you can see the range is right there. So this could be the pause or the a sentence that I didn't want. And then I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And you can see it takes that chunk out and moves everything together. So I go ahead and I'm going to take out maybe one more chunk here. Seems like he's pausing. Okay, so I'm going to hit I on the keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and hit O on the keyboard here. And hit delete on my keyboard. And that takes that chunk out. So I'm going to do the same thing with Lewis. He's going to be talking now. I want to start about here. So I hit O on my keyboard, and you can see it marks the where the playhead is, the out point, and automatically the beginning of the clip um, if I don't choose another end point. So I do want the beginning of the clip to this point gone, so I hit delete, and it moves, uh, it moves together. So one more time, I'm going to take out this chunk. I hit I. And I hit O, and I hit delete on my keyboard. And I would do the same thing um, for these two. So basically my goal is to get the audio sounding really good. And you know, when I sit back and listen to it, it sounds perfect. So now I have all these jump cuts here. So he's talking, and he, because we took out a chunk of his video, even though it sounds good, you can see the picture jumping. So here's where we start B-rolling those jump cuts with some of the B-roll we have. So I'm going to go ahead and randomly put my playhead here and hit I on the keyboard and mark it in. And you can see the range uh, goes to the end of the clip. And just randomly go a little bit past the cut. I could actually go where the out is now and cover that jump, but I'm just going to go a little bit past it and hit out. So let's say that I want to cover my my jump cut with a with a B-roll shot of what they're talking about. So I have my in and out here on the storyline and then I'm going to go to my my B-roll and here I see that you know we have some B-roll and I'm going to turn my skimmer back on so I can skim the clip a little easier. So maybe they're talking about how they you know, they're getting their shirts ready to order. So I'm going to go ahead and this will be my uh, endpoint. And we're going to hit I on the keyboard. And this will be, I don't need an out actually because I have an out here in the timeline. So it knows where to go out automatically in the clip. So now with this B-roll I have audio that I probably don't want because it's, there's a lot of machinery in there. And I don't want that to really uh, to hear that during Skip's interview. So before I put it in, I'm going to select video only so that it only puts the video clip in and not the audio. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit this connect the clip button. When I do that, you'll see that that B-roll goes on top of Skip's interview. And you'll notice if you play it, that it will cover the whole frame and you won't see the jump cut because you see the B-roll. That was a little short, so I'm going to actually stretch it out a little bit by getting on the end of the clip and, direct, and rippling the edit out. So I'm actually adding footage um, to the clip to make it a little longer. You can see when you do that, um, the frame on the left is showing you what I'm, what I'm moving out here because you're always connected to the source, and the frame on the right is showing you what it's uh, going to pop up after it hits the top track. So now if I put that on top and I play it back, you'll see that you know you will cover the jump and it'll sound like Skip is talking continuously. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on this cut too. I'm going to go ahead to the first frame of this cut and mark it in. And I want that B-roll to go out here, so I'm going to hit O on the keyboard to mark it out. 
And now I'm going to go to a, another B-roll here, or maybe I'll, I can go into the same one. I'll, I'll take this one. Okay, that'll be my endpoint. So I'll go ahead and do it up on the menu so you can see that. And I is the shortcut. Again, um, I don't need an out because it knows where to go out here. So here is the endpoint, here's the out, here's the endpoint, and it knows to go out at this duration. So again, these buttons remain blue because it's on video only. So I don't have to keep changing them to video only. It'll just stay where you leave them. And I hit that connected clip button again, and it puts that clip on top of the interview. So again, it covers the jump because it's on the, it starts on the first frame of, of the skips cut. So it actually covers the first frame of this, which is going to cover the jump. So now I play it, and I can see that it, you know, skip, he looks continuous. On his audio, it sounds good. So I can always move this over and adjust it, you know, however I want over the jump cut. You know, maybe I want it to come in a little earlier, maybe a little later. I can drag it around, I can stretch it, you know, so there's all kinds of ways to adjust it. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with uh, Lewis here. We're going to cover his jump cuts. So here's I for N, and I want that maybe to go to here. I move my playhead to that point. I hit O on the keyboard. It marks the range. And I'll go ahead and go to this uh, B-roll here. So that'll be my, my end point. I can also drag this handle in. Same thing. Just hit an I on, an o on the keyboard. If I want to see what I've chosen, I can hit the forward slash key on my keyboard. And that's just going to play from my in to out. So I can sort of check it um, before I put it in. Now if I want to in and out, um, in my event browser, then I really don't need an in and out or an in on my timeline because the playhead's going to act as the endpoint. Um, so here, if I put the playhead right here and I have an in and out here, when I hit the connected clip button, it'll just go right to where the playhead is, playhead is and it'll take the out that I've marked in the event browser. I can immediately see that's too long because which is why we do ins and outs on the timeline so we know where it's going to go out because now it, it went over my next cut which I didn't want so I'm just going to drag it back in and make it about the same size as the other one so again when I play this it will cover the jump okay and again we have skip and uh, we're not going to get going to that right now so now these this area here is good. We have our uh, main track, which we've um, we've tightened up the audio so it sounds really good. We've covered all the jump cuts where we tightened up the audio so it looks continuous. And now we're going to lay some music underneath. Okay, so we have some music here um, from the Apple Loops. And I'm going to go ahead and take it from the very beginning. So that's going to be my end point. So I'll go ahead and mark it in. Okay. And I want to lay it from the very beginning here. So I'll go ahead and hit I on my keyboard to mark that in. And I want it only to go to the end of my sequence, which is, uh, or maybe actually only up till here, because I'll change the music maybe on this part. So I'm going to hit this here. And that puts me on the first frame of this cut. But technically, if I really want the music to end on this cut, I would go one frame back with my left arrow on my keyboard. And you'll see that when I do that, um, that right angle moves to this other side, to the right side, uh, which means I'm on the last frame of the cut on the left. So basically, if I mark it out there, I would not be one frame into my uh, next interview. So you might not notice a frame over a lot of times, but a lot of times you will, especially when it comes to a title that's a frame or two over the cut. Anyway, now that we have our in and out marks on the storyline here, here's our out point and here's our in point. And we have an in point here on our song. Um, I'm ready to put it in. And it really doesn't matter that these are on video only because it's still going to put the song underneath. Um, I'm going to put it, even put it back to all. It'll turn white. 
And now when I hit the connected click button, um, you'll see that it puts the song underneath our interview exactly where we told it to with the mark. So I hit it and our song goes in underneath our interview. I'm going to go ahead and lower the volume of the song because I know it's going to be too loud anyway. So I'm going to just grab that audio level line and drag it down a little bit. So now that I have uh, the interview almost done, I've tightened up my audio, I've b-rolled it, I have music underneath. Uh, now I might, might want to title the people. So here I'm going to, again, pick it in and out on the timeline of where I want that title to go. So I'm going to hit I on the keyboard where my playhead is and that puts the range selector uh, starting there and I want to end the title about here so I hit O and it marks that range on the timeline so I'm going to go to my title and I'm just going to use something like uh, this template here sliding panel uh, there's many templates in here you can mouse over them and see what they do but I'm going to go ahead and use this one and when I double click it you'll see that it goes exactly over my mark so I double click it and it ends up exactly over the marks of uh, where I wanted it. So I click the title and I can get into the control panel or I can just double click the, uh, the title box there and, and put the, uh, whatever I want there. So I'm going to go ahead and name Skip Gambert. And you can see that when I play it, let's see if it plays correctly is people. So it's a little bit fast um, and maybe then I would move my b-roll over to here and so I can give it a little more time and stretch it out the, uh, the move. Is people. Uh, Still a little bit fast. Um, I might go all the way to the jump right there but still covering it with the b-roll. Is people. Uh, it is not about... So, not the best uh, timing there, uh, being that it's a little short, but uh, just for tutorial purposes, it's okay. So, once I get this first title up, I can just basically highlight it and do a copy command. And put my playhead where I want the next title to go. Um, so, maybe here, and do a paste command, and it'll just paste the same title. In which case, I can just um, change the name in the title. So here I can just click the title and put my playhead in it first and then click it and put his first name in. So I can go through and just uh, once I make that first title, I can. Uh, copy and paste the rest. I could actually make this one a little longer so it stays up longer. You can see it's rendering um, as I go. You. It's multiplied ten times so that... So basically this is a basic inter interview structure and an easy way um, uh, to cut an interview if you follow the process. Well that's my tutorial today. I hope you liked it and I'll try to put some more up as soon as I can. Thanks.